Good day, my mighty baboon. We are back in our Grimdong walkthrough, and today we are going to explore the conflagration and do the Lost Armaments quest. And I wish I could say I can't wait for that, but honestly, and I'm sure there are a lot of people that share that view with me, I don't like this area. It is a difficult area, and there is a lot of ether patches on the ground, so especially as we are playing hardcore, we will need to be extra careful about it. Think about the conflagration as the amalgamation and gruesome harvest area, just cranked up to 11. It's going to be more of the same, ether patches on the ground, ether mobs. And so to prepare for that, I feel like 34% ether resistance is not going to be enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to craft one ether soul, and that's going to bump our ether resistance to 50. So to craft that, we will first need to craft a wrath stone. So let's search for that, and wrath stone are going to be fairly easy to craft. We just need some ether crystals and some cracked lodestone. And now let's craft our ether soul. So now maybe you start to understand why I ask you every time to farm ether crystals. It's because it's always used to craft components and we never get enough of them. If you cannot craft ether souls components yet, as a reminder, the blueprint can be bought at Devil's Crossing once you reach respected status. Something that you should already be at that point of the game. So now let's go see Darlet. And let's see, I'm going to remove this soul shard. We really can afford to lose some vitality resistance. And I'm going to replace the soul shard with the ether soul. Bring me back something interesting. All right, great. Now that we have 50% ether resistance, I feel more confident to start the conflagration. So to go there, what we're going to do, we are going to go back to Homestead and then we are going to go directly northeast. And by the way, this area is completely optional. You do not have to do that. So if at some point you think this area is too difficult for you, feel free to turn around and proceed to the Soros Bastion. So as you can see, we already start with some nonsense here with this long ether patch on the ground, but don't be afraid, just be ready to turn right as soon as you can and pop a potion if your health drop too low. So we get the Drain Mutator. It's not a good one for us. Enemies are not going to deal bleeding or acid damage, so we're not going to benefit from the resistance increase. And the health regeneration debuff is really going to affect our survivability. So we're going to need to be extra careful. Let's cross the ether patch again. Oh, by the way, these ether patches on the ground are not affected by your ether resistance, meaning that you can have as much ether resistances as you want, it's still going to deal the same amount of damage. If you have three dynamites, you can clear the way here. However, do not do that. It's going to lead you to Port Valsbury. It's one of the challenge dungeon. You know, a little like the Step of Torments. And personally, I hate this dungeon. If you think the conflagration is hard to navigate, well, wait for Port Valsbury. You are going to be in for a surprise. We are going to do Port Valsbury at some point. However, that's not going to be now. We level up to level 33, so let's just clear the enemies around. And then we are going to allocate our points. Let's see, I want to take Ascension, it's really a nice skill. It's an active skill, and you can see from the skill cooldown that it's going to be active less than 50% of the time, but it's going to help with two things. First of all, it is going to boost our damage, it's also going to give us some damage absorption. And flat damage absorption is actually incredible. The reason it's so good, and that it's going to improve our survivability, is that it's applied after all the other defense mechanisms. So for example, it's applied after armor, after resistances, after a shield if you have a shield, so overall, it's going to greatly decrease all the damage we receive, especially all the ticks from damage over time. So usually, how we are going to use Ascension, often we are going to keep that for boss battles, and it can be used either defensively or offensively, depending on the situation you are in. But anyway, most of the time, we are going to pop that skill every time we start a battle. There is another long ether patch on the ground. Before we cross that, let's kill this boss. What did you got for me, Beholden? Uh, how disappointing. There is a totem here, so let's cross and let's do it. One fresh Hulk and two bosses. These Titans and Hulk can be trouble sometimes, but we should be fine. And let's see what we got. We don't care about this war mace. This helm is not bad. More armor, and overall there is more resistance too. 
I'm probably not going to equip it right now, but I'm going to keep it for later. This core is useless for us. Same thing with this revolver. This bone charm. I'm probably not going to use it. We don't care about guns. We don't care about blades either. This waste guard is a little less good than what we have. And this epic is for Pierce Knight Blade build, so we do not care about it. And this skull is no good for us. Okay, now that we have done the totem, be ready my friends because we are going to meet the boss of this area, the Herald of the Flame. This boss can be a little tricky if you don't know what you are doing. He is going to have two phases. In his first phase, he's going to be linked to the ground. He's not going to be able to move. And in his second phase, he will be able to move, but very slowly. During all the battles, he will be able to summon Hulks. However, I would suggest that you still focus on the boss and not on the Hulks. So the boss is going to be just north. I'm just going to clear a few clusters. This is just to have a place we can retreat to, just in case we need. Let's clear everything and then we are going to deal with the boss. Here you are, Herald of the Flame. So he's going to deal ether damage with just a sprinkle of elemental damages. Okay, now that his health has dropped to 50%, we will start the second phase of the battle. He will have a different set of attacks, but the strategy remains the same anyway. We we'll just continue to dance around him and pop Revenous Heart below him. I really don't like the fact that we cannot sustain energy. It's something that we will need to find a way to improve later. And we got him. I find it very odd that he didn't summon any hugs during the battle. He usually do that often. We get the Herald's jacket. If you remember, we had the Herald's mask already. But I did sell it, right? I think I already sell it. Yeah, it's not here anymore. With two set items, it could have been a good alternative to what we have. But anyway, we'll probably find better gear very soon. So here there is an exalted stash. I'm still going to keep it. I'm going to put all the items I want to keep in the third inventory bag. And let's see what we got. I don't like this diadem. The Apothecary's Injector is part of the Apothecary set. Personally, I've never used this set. I don't think it's very good. Here, claim the resources to finish the Lost Armaments quest. And don't forget to pick up the dynamite. And with that, we are finished to explore the conflagration. So what we just need to do is go back to Homestead and get the reward for the Lost Armaments quest. You're still in one piece. Super that means you didn't try to enter the conflagration then. Wise choice. Well, I'll be damned. You got more guts than brains. But you won't find me complaining when these cannons are back in our hands. I'll have some men sent out there to hold them back immediately. You have done the legion a huge service. Thank ya. You're welcome. We get some black legion reputation and some iron bits. Alright, now that we have finished this quest, we have a few choice. We could continue our way and continue the main quest. But what I'm going to do is show you another area. Do you remember before we arrived to Homestead, when we were on the Prospector Trail? There was a way that was closed and we needed three dynamites to clear it. And clearing this way will give us access to three new areas. You can see it on the map, the Pine Barrens, the Jagged Waste, the Shaded Basin and Tarrant's Old. So to do that, I will need more dynamite. I'm going to skip that part because you already know how to do that. You just need to go back to Old Arcovia to go to the different mines, the Hanafi mine, or the Stanton mine, and at all level that's pretty boring. A few moments later. So I did went there, I now have enough dynamite, and so to access this area, what we need to do is run source from our homestead. Am I on the right trail? That looks right. What was that on the road? Okay, just a jug. So around here we are going to meet a lot of goblins. And you know the drill with them. Just focus on the shamans first. So here we will need three dynamites to clear the way. So I think at that point I have five of them. And let's go. We enter the Pine Barrens, 
And as I said here, in all of these areas, it's mainly going to be goblins and beasts. We are going to advance, and along the way, not too much further, we are going to find a rift gate. Let's grab this note. You can see on the minimap that we are almost there. So we got it, the Pine Baron's Rip Gate, and just west we have a Black Legion campment. And as you can see, they want to talk to us. That's far enough. You have entered the Black Legion camp. State your business. I'm looking to do my part. Hmm. Well, my men are stretched thin, and the beasts are numerous. You would do us all a favor by killing just about anything roaming the wilds. But if you are keen on risking your life, I do have a few targets in mind that I will gladly pay you to eliminate. To the west is an area known as the Jagged Waste. There you will find a pride of manticores. Their matriarch, Mogara, is a bloodthirsty beast with a taste for human flesh. Put her down and I will give you a fine share of our own bits. Pretty simple, right? Just kill Mogara. What about this one? You must be one tough least to make it way out here on your own. Deathmark Cadris of the Black Legion. What brings you here, citizen? I see. Well, I can't stop you from going out there, but I must warn you that the wilds out here are not to be trifled with. The jagged waste to the west is full of manticores, but if you are foolish enough to venture there, then perhaps you'll be willing to bring something back to me. The manticore waste walkers pack a potent venom up in their barbed tails. It's quite caustic and can burn through nearly anything. My hope is that the Legion can use it in their effort against the Knonian invaders. We are dealing with a large group of cultists up near Homestead, and they are starting to bring in the larger demons from the void. We need to turn the tide and fast. If you bring me back a Venom Glen from a Waste Walker, then I will gladly provide you with a blade specially coated with their poison. Should do some serious damage in a fight. What do you say? I say I'm going to do it, man. Don't worry about that. And with that, that's going to be it for today. We are going to do this optional area in the next episode. Don't forget to add a like and subscribe if you like the video. And see ya!